Now that we've spent some time describing graphs and looking at things like isomorphism, we also want to talk about how we can move around a graph and what it means for a graph to be connected. Um, we have two versions of the same graph down here because we're going to use it for a couple different things. But looking at this graph here, uh, we would consider this to be a connected graph because there is a way to get from every one vertex, any vertex, to any other vertex. Okay, we call a way to get from one vertex to another a path, and we can think of that as a sequence of edges you follow to get from vertex A to vertex Z. Now in this case we don't have an A to Z, but we could look for a path from maybe A to F, or from D to H. And there are lots of different paths we could use. For example, if we wanted to get from A to F, we could go straight across like this, and we would write that path as A, B, D, F. Now if we wanted to be more formal, we could write the sequences of edges. We could say that we have the set uh, A to B, and then the set B to D, and then the set D to F, or you could use edge notation AB with a line over it, BD, and then DF. Uh, but this would be one path from A to F. However, it's not the only path from A to F. Right? There's no reason you couldn't take a different path. You could go this way. Right? That's another path from A to F. Okay, you could also do this. You could retrace some steps if you wanted to. You could make a very circuitous route. Um, there's all different ways you could follow a path. Oftentimes in graph theory, we have uh, the idea of a simple path. And a simple path is a path that doesn't repeat any edges. So um, if we wanted to make a path from A to H that was a simple path, Right. We could go this way. Right. That's just one of many simple paths from A to H. We could go A, B, C, E, D, F, H. Okay. Now this path has a length. You can see that we covered one, two, three, four, five, six edges. Right. And sometimes you want a path of a specific length. So sometimes we talk about taking a walk on a graph. Uh, we might want to know how many um, paths there are from A to H of a, a fixed length. And that's a little more complicated problem. It involves actually using um, the adjacency matrix and raising the adjacency matrix to different powers. Okay. Now, in addition to paths, we might also want to move around a graph in a circuit. And a circuit basically begins and ends at the same vertex. So an obvious simple circuit in this graph here would be a circuit like this. So you could say the circuit B, D, that's not the order I went in though, B, D, E, C, B, right? That's a simple circuit. Okay. Simple because it's not reusing any edges. You could also look at a circuit here is another simple circuit, All right? F, H, G, and I think I'm not going always in the order I originally implied, but that's okay for our examples. Now we could also do a circuit that's not a simple circuit. If we wanted to have a circuit that started at A, right, in order to get back to A, no matter how far we go, we're going to have to retrace our steps, okay? So you could have a circuit A, B, C, E, D, F, D, B, A, that would also be a circuit. So you have to get a little bit familiar with the um, terminology paths and circuits. There are ways to move around from one vertex to another or to start at a vertex and get back to itself. The word simple means that basically that you're never retracing your steps. Okay? And we'll be looking at Euler paths and circuits and Hamilton paths and circuits in the next video. One of the issues with connectivity um, is the idea of a cut edge and a cut vertex. And often we talked about there being lots of different representations, uh, different applications for graphs. One of them is that's sort of simple to understand is the idea of a network, that we have a bunch of computers connected by some sort of connection, whether that's cables or Wi-Fi or whatever. Um, but if you have some sort of network and a computer or a connection goes down, then you're going to potentially lose connectivity. Right now, every computer in this network could communicate to every other computer. We could also think of this as a road system, and you could get from any location on this map to any other location on this map. Um, but let's say some of the edges started going down. Um, a cut edge is an edge in a connected graph that if you remove it, the graph becomes disconnected. So let's take a look 
at all the edges here. Okay, you've got the edge AB, right? What happens if we remove the edge A to B? Is this graph connected? Well, A would actually be isolated, right? A would no longer be able to communicate with any other computer, so we would consider AB to be a cut edge. Okay? Now let's say we decided to try a different cut edge, and sometimes you have to kind of use your fingers to kind of cover up an edge, right, instead of just drawing and erasing. If I were to take the edge B to C down, I wouldn't have any problems. I could still get all the way around this network, right? Everybody's still connected one way or another. Right? B to D wouldn't cause any problems. Uh, C to E wouldn't cause any problems, right? Assuming that we're only doing one at a time, uh, D to E is not going to cause any problems. But you take a look over here at D to F. If D to F goes down, then you've got sort of two subgraphs that are both connected, right? But the FGH circuit can't communicate with the ABCDE graph. So DF would also be a cut edge. But looking around at F to G, or G to H, or F to H, those won't cause any problems. So in this case, they're really just two cut edges, A, B, if we want to be a little bit more formal, or D, F, okay? You could say A to B, you could say D to F, you could also use A, B line and DF line as ways to represent edges. Okay, it really depends on how you're doing it in your particular textbook or uh, course. Okay, so the idea of a cut edge again, if you take the edge down, can you still get from every one vertex to any other vertex? And it's easiest to do by kind of systematically going through each one. Use your finger on a piece of paper to kind of cover up the edge and see if there's any breaks in the graph. Okay, now a cut vertex is similar Right? But in a cut vertex, a vertex would be removed. And when you remove the vertex, you're also removing all edges incident to it. Okay, now incident means basically attached to it. So let's start over here. If we were to take out A, right? If A were to go down, then so would this edge go down. Right? But looking at the rest of the graph, it's still connected. So A doesn't cause any problems for us. But if we take B down, right, then all three of these edges go down. Right? And this part of the graph is fine, but again, A becomes isolated. So if we're going to make a list of our cut vertices, remember the plural, plural of vertex is vertices, we have to include A on that list. Okay. So we did B. If we look at C and its incident edges, we still have connectivity. Right? If we try E and look at the incident edges, we still have connectivity, and again you could do this with your fingers on pen and paper, you just might need to use more than one. But if we take D down, right, then we have a problem. We have a subgraph over here and a subgraph over here that won't, will no longer be able to communicate to each other. Right? So D is going to get added to our list of cut vertices. F as well, if F goes down, right, now you have the GH and the A, B, C, D, E subgraphs that are no longer able to communicate. Right. But if G goes down, right, no problems. And similarly, if H goes down, no problems. Okay. Oops. Okay. So you kind of have to be just sort of systematic about it. It's not that complicated. Try to cover up um, the edges or cover up the vertex and the edges. Um, you know, sometimes in networking you'll have sort of names for specific edges and you can sort of see the DF uh, in both of these, this is the same graph, but in both cases D to F is uh, what we call a bridge. It sort of connects two subgraphs of substantial size and if that bridge is the only way to connect them, if that bridge goes down, right, that bridge is a cut edge. If either one of these vertices go down on the bridge, right, then the edge goes down also. So anytime you see a bridge like that, uh, you can be sure that that's going to be a cut vertex and also a cut edge. All right, so practice these. It shouldn't be too bad. See what you can do.